It is a privilege to be joined on the summit today by Keegan Martin of Friends University, and there is so much to talk about, Keegan. Let's just start off with this. You have been named for the NAI, the Remington Award winner, which goes out to the dominant, the premier center in college football in in the NAIA, and of course, that it's for all divisions, but specifically, we're talking about you today. So congratulations on that honor, and thanks for taking some time with us today. Thank you, sir. I'm, I'm glad to be here, and I can't wait to enjoy the conversation. Well, let's let's talk about the Remington Award then. How cool is that? Top center in the country. Man, uh, it's really cool. Um, I, I started thinking about that, like just how cool it was. And, man, uh, I think what I like most about it is it just shows how all those times where I could have easily quit, um, I never did. And um, but just kind of like as a job, you know, you when you have a job, you constantly show up. And when you constantly show up, sooner or later, you'll get a raise. And I think that the the bosses finally seen that, uh, you know, there was a employee working pretty hard and I got recognized and I'm grateful. And, uh, man, I'm just glad to be a part of such a great award. I love the analogy, man. I think that that is great. And, and I think there's a lot to be said that for everything in life, you just have to show up and just keep showing up. Well, you've been doing it for a number of years, a four time all American, and that hasn't happened uh, very often in the NAI. Talk a little bit about that because it's something that's been obviously you've been showing up, not just in 2023, but for years before, man. Yeah. So, uh, I came out of a small school in Oklahoma and I was really eager to show myself, um, and I had a coach Harrison at Bethel College at the time hit me up and he really believed in um, my highlight, my film. I, I was showing him and um, he was fortunate enough to bring me in. And my first year over there um, wasn't um, it was a good year. I started as a true freshman, which I really, really liked. I love the experience. But um, man, um, unfortunately, I didn't get the accolades I wanted that year. And that summer, I really um, dived into film and I really just corrected everything I possibly could. Um, you know, just playing through the whistle was my my biggest quote I would always use, just play through the whistle. And that sophomore year, that was my first time. Uh, I was a first time all American. And, um, it just, it just, my mentality that I played with of just play through the whistle, play through the whistle. And, you know, it, it really paid off. And from my sophomore year since, um, I was fortunate enough, like you said, to become a first team all American every year. And I just believe that's just by trying to put the best film I can out. And um, you got to play hard in order to do that. So, played your high school ball at Yale, correct? Yes, sir. Yale Bulldog. Okay, we're we're based here in Durant, Oklahoma. So, if you look on the map, Yale is almost exactly three miles, or excuse me, three hours if you drive okay. just straight north from Durant. Now, you got to take some twists and turns to get there, but uh, yeah, a, a great school there, quality school for a small school in Oklahoma. You found your way up. To get to play there in North Newton. Let's talk about that for just a little bit because you played for Coach Terry Harrison there. And then uh, as, as your time was done there, you, you get one more year, you make the move from North Newton to go play for Coach Harrison again as uh, he had moved on and, and was a part of the Friends Falcons program. Uh, what went into to making that move for that final year? Man, uh, when he left that year, it was a heartbreaker, um, especially – I was one of his old line guys and he was our he's our um, main position coach for O line and you know losing someone respectable as him you know it hurt and um man uh, I knew I knew that was someone I wanted to have coach me my last year and um I finished up my last season at Bethel and I loved the coaching staff that they had over there and um loved all the guys they had over there but man when it was that time to decide where I wanted to further my education um as well my athletics you know, Coach Harrison's just that guy I wanted to play for and, uh, you know, be coached under. So, We're speaking now with Keegan Martin here on the Summit on Midwest Sportsnet. I encourage you, please subscribe to the channel and please and continue to enjoy our videos here. We get to visit with a lot of great people, including Keegan. And I, I, let's let's talk really quickly, since we're mentioning Bethel right now, there there was uh, surely – when you you made the move, you you move from North Newton down to Wichita, and and you get the schedule for 2023. Obviously, I mean you have to look and go. Okay, when are when are we playing Bethel this year? It's going to be back in North Newton. That game had to be one that you're going to remember for years and years and decades to come. I mean, for the weather alone, because uh, it was cold, it was rainy. 
And on top of that, you didn't even play the full game, but you got the win over your former team. Tell us a little bit about that game, a 43 nothing victory for friends in just three quarters of play. Man, like you said, it was nasty weather, unforgettable. Um, it was just one of those games where, you know, a team that likes running the ball should have a pretty good uh, success rate. And uh, it seemed that way that Saturday. Um, we, I think we did a good job keeping the ball off the ground, which we struggled with a little bit throughout the season. Um, but when we keep the ball off the ground, you know, I, I think it's very, very hard to beat the Falcons. Um, and it was just one of those days where everything went right for us and it seemed like possibly everything went wrong on the other side. Um, but, you know, I, I give our defense credit as well as our offense because we played in the same conditions and uh, we just we made it work. Um, but that's how that game rolled over. On, uh, we kind of rolled on them a little bit. But, uh, you know, that's just kind of a big brother whooping up on the little brother. You know how it is. <laughs> and I'm the big brother, by the way, although my little brother is a, he's a little bit bigger than I am now anyway. That aside, though, you know, that was one of the big wins in the season, I think, for friends. And the Falcons finished nine and two. Uh, I I think you should have made the playoffs. Now, nobody in Kansas City ever asked me, but if they had, I would have had you all in the playoffs. And I think that was really one of the biggest wins of the season there for friends, getting that that victory there again on the road. A a big win as it stands. And and um, you talked about the 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 way that the the Falcons run the ball. You know, if if you run the ball well that things are going to go well for you. My goodness, you ran the ball well, like no team or very few teams in history have ever done in the NAI. 4,611 rushing yards on the season. That's in the top five ever for uh, for a team, and you did it in just 11 games. And the, the teams that, that are above you with that total mark played more games to get there, number one. You averaged 419.2 yards per game over the course of the season. That's tops in the NAI all time. Tell us a little bit about that, because I think that goes a long way toward getting that recognition for the Remington Award. I mean, that that line played a big part. Yes, sir. And just it just gives credit to Coach Harrison. You know, uh, when I when I say he's a good coach, you know, he has a he's a good recruiter as well. Um, he has kids on this uh, on this old line that are nasty and just ready to get after it. And when you have five guys like that, and sometimes six, when we throw in a slugger tight end, you know it's going to be hard to stop what we're going to throw at you. And especially when we have talented guys in a backfield that just love running and have all the energy in the world, uh, something's going to happen. It's going to be, it's going to be a show. You know, it's, it's one of those things too, that uh, teams like, like yours and, and the, the offense that's run there, it, may not get as much uh, as many accolades as maybe a quarterback who passes the ball more. And I, I know Cavante obviously is a, a strong quarterback. Uh, how nice was it for, for you to get to, to block for a player like him and, and the rest of the guys in the backfield? Man. Yeah. First off, like you said, all of them in the backfield, they were all amazing to watch, but man, Cavante, man, I remember like, I think it was our third game um, against uh, Ottawa. And man, he had him an insane hurdle over a defender. And from that point on, I was like, okay, this is what everybody's talking about. This guy's different. And uh, man, he's just so spectacular to watch um, watch him make plays, plays he's not supposed to make, plays where it's composed, like the, the play's supposed to be a bust, a dead play. And next thing you know, we have a touchdown out of it. And man, a props to him for making something out of nothing, even though we should have had something in the first place. But man, props to him. I, now I, I'll ask you this too, and and uh, just uh, it was something I, I was just considering. I, Harding in Division Two won the national championship yes, this sir. year, and Harding has an offense that is similar to what you all run. And and talk talk about what it means to get to see a team that that you know. Again, some some people may look and go, "That's just a ground game; it's never going to go." It's been proven already this year; it can win a title. A hundred percent. I believe um, in the future. Um, that power football is going to come back. And uh, a lot of these defenses nowadays are recruiting on for the speed and not so much the strength. And when you find a team like Harding, that's just going to use their strength against you the whole entire game. Good luck. Um, so, yeah. 
Well, I, listen, I have to tell you, Keegan, I mean, I enjoy listening to your analysis on this, and I think, I think that segues quite well into the, the next question I have for you is to, or topic I'd love for you to talk about, and that's the fact that you are an academic all-district player as well, one of eight players on the Friends roster to, to get that honor. So, obviously, the classroom is important to you, too. Yes, sir. Man, uh, I'm actually getting uh, my master's in education right now, and at a young age, I had a teacher um, that just invested into me. And um, by him just investing in me is kind of kind of what made me choose this route that I'm going under, just where I can help uh, kids that also kind of were in my same boat because I wasn't always there um, academically. Um, I thought maybe I would um, not do so well in college. But the fact that I had a, um, a teacher um, really kind of show me the ropes of how things would go in college and is telling me that I, I just have to show up and do it, do it and do it and just not quit. You know, that sophomore year, I really had a mental a mindset change, really. And uh, I just told myself, I can do it. You just got to show up and do it. And that uh, my freshman year in college, it, it wasn't easy. Um, it, it's really discipline. You got to show up, take care of your schoolwork, show up to practice. After practice, do your homework and basically repeat it. Um, and, you know, after you get on that good schedule routine, um, it kind of comes a little easier. But um, I just kind of kept that routine since freshman year, and it's kind of helped me become where I'm at today, and I'm glad for it. Just have to show up. That's clearly the theme of, of our conversation today. You just have to show up. Well, I'm, I listen, I appreciate you showing up here today. And I, I would ask one more question then. Uh, and I think that this, again, just segues uh, on in from the, the last point there. What what's next for you? You're talking about education. You want to want to give back to them. Are there any particular goals? Anything that that you see that uh, hey this this might be the next place that I wind up getting to help others as you talked about. Um, so right now my goal um, I'm gonna my goal is to finish my master's up in July, um, and then after that I'm looking for um, teaching and coaching opportunities this fall. I'm already I've already been in talks with a few around the area as well Oklahoma. And um, I'm just looking forward to seeing where that takes me. All right. Well, hey, listen, I, I wish you the best in that. And uh, wherever it happens to be, Oklahoma, Kansas, uh, I know that you're well familiar with both those states. And I'm sure that you will succeed wherever you go. Uh, of course, the big part of it being showing up and, and being a part. Keegan Martin, the Remington Award winner for the NAIA yeah. for 2023, four-time first-team All-American and a big part uh, of the uh, success that Bethel has had in recent years and friends had in 2023. Keegan, thank you so much for being with us here today on the Summit. Thank you, Joey, and thank you guys for listening in and tuning in. And um, till next time.